I went to the local park where the football, Red Football Club was and I didn't know what to expect. I didn't even like football to be honest with you. And I just, I don't know, I just got attracted to it. And then I found out that I could come along for free, um, get involved in sessions and it was just a good environment to be in. And I really, really enjoyed it and I kept coming back. Uh, the next thing that happened was I got told that I could possibly become a coach and be a, a community role model within my area, which is Tyler's in Reading. And to me, that was a big thing because um, mum, single mum and things like that is anyone who I could help. That was a really big thing for me. So I started pursuing my coaching career and working in my community, youth worker, mentor, and yeah, I've been loving it ever since. Dan, uh, first of all, came on the um, activities at Kicks, So he was a participant, represented us on some national events as well. Then he started volunteering and he, would, uh, he won a National Volunteering Award for Kicks, And then because of his volunteering, we then came, he became part-time. And then after becoming part-time, he ended up being our Prince's Trust um, officer, full-time officer. And now he's working in the Social Inclusion Department as one of our mentors, full-time. So we, again, pride ourselves on the staff that we've got. And it's took a long time to get some of the staff that we've got to be able to represent us, not just in, you know, one community but in several communities that Reading Football Club operates in this way. What we're looking at is um, role models, local role models. So Dan acts as a fantastic role model for his community as well. He works with a grassroots club called Centre Skills doing some coaching there and he's well thought of within that community and between the BMA community there used to be an invisible gate around football, pro football clubs that were seen as predominantly white. So we're hopefully going to break down some barriers as well with these young people uh, acting as mentors for their people in their community, That's specifically Daniel. I deal with young people who are not in mainstream school, so they come out of school for alternative provision with us at Redden Football Club and we try to offer them something a little bit different rather than just classroom. So they will learn to play football, uh, basketball, uh, boxing. We also do uh, some qualifications for sports leaders, JFL, where they get to learn how to coach or how to improve themselves as an individual, whether it's leadership skills or behaviour. Anything that the young people want within that area, if we can access it for them and help them in that way, then we go and do that as well. They are kids who are not from the most fortunate of backgrounds. Some are from wealthy backgrounds, some are not, so you get a little a little timeline of, of different type of kids you meet over the times and all have different type of needs. As a role model now, mentor and working in the community, I can relate to them a little bit more. And there's some who just need that extra push, whether it's uh, mental, some it's social, and some it's just physical. Coming to the kick sessions, losing a bit of weight, keeping fit, eating healthy, and just things like that, yeah. And it's, I think we've, uh, we do quite a lot for them. And whether it's a big chunk or a little chunk, it's still a little improvement for those people that we meet. Um, community trust and uh, social inclusion areas are very, very important for the community. Uh, reason being that as a young individual, football perspective now, it, you could go to the park and see everyone playing in the park. You might have your football in your boots, but it's that step of going from outside the court into the court. And it's a very, it's a big, big step. Um, you'll see it nowadays as well. Kids will just be loitering, waiting, and that one kid might say, do you know what, can I play with you guys? And that's the step that we want all the kids to take in the community. So just by them getting through the gate, putting their boots on and just having a first touch on the ball, then we start integrating them into the kicks and we bring them up as a character and then hopefully develop them to go on to future steps. Social inclusion is always targeted, hard to reach young people. So the kicks programme, for instance, is a Premier League funded programme where we'll go into areas of deprivation or targeted areas and work with young people that um, wouldn't have the opportunity of maybe playing football on a regular basis or where normal services cannot get those young people because they, they classify them as hard to reach. We can work with those young people and maybe signpost them and do some mentoring with them. So now they're, they're engaging in society in a positive way rather than a negative way. This is how we impact, we engage with young people, we engage with people in general. Uh, it's 24 seven, it's either working with young people that have gone missing from their homes and we can speak to them. It's about people in isolation who now have got an opportunity to come to the football club to talk about football. It's, 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 it's in a whole thing of uh, things that we can help with the local community, how we impact it. Back then, Daniel, who was 16, 17, I, I, social skills were, I didn't like talking to anyone. I had my hood up, I was relaxed. I didn't really go out of my, out of my shell to talk to people. Um, 
being involved in football and not just football but other activities within within Kicks as well, I was able to to speak a bit more freely, um, not feel anxious or shy about what I would say to someone and if it would offend them, but I could share my opinion and share my ideas and, and, and yeah, I've I've grown from it a lot. I've done a lot of courses, level one, level two. I've learned how to cook with uh, my qualifications. Youth club, the kids have taught me how to take banter and make it fun, but be professional at the same time. Um, table tennis skills have improved as well. But yeah, it's just, it's been, it's been a really good journey. And I, I hope it doesn't stop. My dream was to be as close as I can to football. And I said to myself, I wouldn't just narrow it down to just what football playing on the pitch. If it came with being a physiotherapist, a masseuse, if I was the first aider, as long as I was with football, I would be happy. And if I could give back to the community and be a role model, that would be ideal for me. So at the moment, I think I'm doing all right, yeah. <laughs>